I'm just going to ruin everyone's good time. These are some actors who have worked with Rowan Polanski since he was convicted. Like, since everyone knew, like, that guy fucked a 13-year-old. Walter Matthau, Harrison Ford, Hugh Grant, Sigourney Weaver, Johnny Depp, Frank Langella, Adrian Brody, Ian McNeil, Pierce Brosnan, Tom Wilkinson, John Bernthal, James Belushi, Jodie Foster, Kate Winslet, Christoph Waltz, John C. Riley, uh, Mickey Rourke, John Cleese. So I'm just, those are enough names where I was like, fuck all these people. Because I yeah. like some of them. Like, Mickey Rourke, though, he'll suck a dick for, like, a cameo in some Sylvester Stallone movie. Fucking weirdo. I saved him. I did not have sexual relations with those children on that island. You know, I had a whole bunch of weird paranoid suspicions about what the hell was going on. And I formed a bunch of opinions about the town and about the people in it that were like, surely that couldn't be. Because a whole place can't be like, you know, weird town, you know, where the stranger wanders in and and all the people are in the bar and they all shut up when he looks at him and, mm -hmm. and they tell you don't go out of the house on the hill and it's like that mm -hmm. and then you go away and you think no that's i was wrong i mean that's insane thinking i'm paranoid i imagined that stuff that couldn't be the reason for why so and so was acting like could it mm -hmm. and then you find out later on the track that you were exactly on track mm -hmm. with a lot of this stuff that some of your worst nightmares were real it does rip your life to pieces it? If you'll let it. Yeah. And no matter how strong you are when you come in off the farm mm. with those convictions and those and a certain line of attack, you are going to be affected by this place. Yeah. Mm. You'll eat yourself alive here. Mm. I am the highest version of myself. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the highest version of myself. I, am. I know I am that I am. Are you not doing no, it? Or I'm are you doing gonna, it. I'm doing uh, it. Very stop, confused. stop interrupting. <laughs> yeah, that was my fault. You're right. Go ahead. And hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Godspeed Podcast. I am Dan Eats Everything. And I am Joe Guy. I am BS Mobility. BS and Billy. Hey, Billy's back. Burr, burr, burr. D D D D G D D D D D J Ski. Remember that from like wow? No, I do. I don't. That was like drop that. That was perfect. Who? No, who I, I fucked it up like eight times. Who's you're like out of the screen? Who's got a sound? <laughs> do you have a sound machine over there, Joe? No, it was Billy. No. Oh, I pressed the button. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm gonna do, every time I do this, you got to do like a. <laughs> Today's gonna be sad. Huh? Yeah. No, uh, so Joe, be what, Billy, actually, Billy, it's been a while since we've seen you. What have you been up to lately, man? Um, I uh, my car broke. Oh, yeah, the pistons are out of sync. Okay, but I get to get a new car now. <laughs> All right, <laughs> it's kind of exciting. All right, what are you thinking? What are you thinking about getting? SUV. Okay. Someone goes like a compass. I'm like, no. Like a fucking compass. Nah. No, what the fuck is it? Nah. A Sienna, maybe? Okay, okay. What are you thinking? Do you know cars? Uh, I like cars, yeah. I'm a car guy. What's a good SUV? Uh, Jeep Wrangler. Oh, those are <laughs> grand. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Yeah, no, they're good, though. They're the best. I might get a LeSabre. Okay. A 99 LeSabre. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's my first car. Do you have a LeBaron? There's a boat. No, a LeBaron. You ever watch Freddy Got Fingered? That's where I got that from. It's so... Freddy Got Fingered, speaking of which. Yo, f I can't believe they let that movie be in theaters and they go... And they put it on the marquee, Freddy Got Fingered. I'm like, <laughs> I feel like you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> can't say that. Oh, he did the introduction, so he forgot to open his Red Bull. This dude's over here with Natty Ice. You got the Natty Daddies? Just, just sipping. No, it's a Labat Max. A LeBaron Labat. Okay. Same LeBaron. thing. Oh, okay. Let's talk kid touchers. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, oh this episode's gonna be crazy. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so you you can start us off. I got I got a bunch of stuff too. We're probably gonna split this up into two parts again. Okay. Because uh, it's probably gonna go a little long. All right. Okay. You got time? Uh, I got all the time in the world. Great. <laughs> Kick us <laughs> off, bud. All right. Well. If you want to do an episode, which we're doing about 
Chamos? The rampant, yeah, the rampant amount of chamosity going on in Hollywood. (laughs) It is, it's like, it's like if you walk through Hollywood, like in chamosity was like moisture, your feet, your socks would be soaked going through like the first eight steps of. Oh, yeah. We ain't going nowhere because it's bad boys for life. Oh, P. Diddy. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I don't got I don't got nothing on P. Diddy either. That's crazy. Neither did Jeffrey Epstein, apparently. What? Do, sorry. <laughs> Wasn't he just another version of Epstein? Yeah. Anyways, the rap version. <laughs> I wonder how many times him and Will Smith got together. And all right, Bill, what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> well, we kind of cut him off there. Sorry, Billy. No, it's all good. So the so biggest talk about chamosity. One of the most uh, public stories. Dan, have you heard of Roman Polanski? Um, film, director? film director got his uh, wife got murdered in the uh, that whole yeah. thing with the with the Manson guy. Yeah, uh, he was. Um, yeah, Sharon Tate. Yeah. Absolutely. Also, Natalie Wood was murdered. Well, he wasn't there, but like it was his boat. So mm. anyway. Roman Polanski in 1977 got indicted on charges of fucking a 13-year-old girl. Ooh. So Roman Polanski uh, at whose house was this at again? Let me look at it. Oh, oh, at Jack Nicholson's house. Had a 13-year-old prostitute come over in America, and uh, Roman Polanski gave her wine and fucked her up. By the way, which is funny to me. Not even funny. The girl testified that he fucked, and in the beginning said, like, yeah, like, he fucked in the ass like this would happen like this is really awful so he got indicted on charges which one in a million would never happen nowadays would be like oh, it's all good dude like just lay low don't do that again got indicted on charges and Roman Polanski was like everyone in Hollywood was like dude chill like it's fine you're gonna get it's gonna get dismissed you're good they're not gonna list this fucking prostitute so then uh in the midst of that someone called him and said hey I know uh the DA of Los Angeles County and he's gonna throw out the dismissal and he's gonna you're gonna serve time you're gonna be like formally indicted and you're gonna go to jury so he's like well i'm gonna go to france now and live with the other people like me so he fled to france in 1977 so understandable action on the part of Roman polanski where i'm like yeah that's a good move (laughs) because you're gonna be you know what i mean they were gonna make an example out of him so my biggest thing is this Roman Polanski left in 1977, you would think, well, it's over. Like, you're disgraced. You're done. Like, I don't care if you made Rosemary's Baby or not. Like, fucking, mm-mm. Like, no one's going to want to work with you. No one's going to fly the production out to France so that you're able to make a movie for Main Street in Hollywood. Nah, did a bunch of times. And it led up to her, uh, him making The Pianist in the year 2002. He was nominated for an Academy Award for it. Which is already like, whoa, like that's like you're gonna have him on the dais there. Of course he didn't show up because he would be immediately arrested if he showed up to America. But they nominated him, which means he got enough votes for it, so everyone's like, It's okay, he's a pedophile. Like we all it's okay. Like I know Matt I'm one. It's cool. Not me, but like they're saying that. And just to go through the names of people that like stood up and clapped when he won Best Director at the Academy Awards. And he won. Hold on, first off, Harrison Ford presented it, so scum. And who would also, he worked for Roman Polanski uh, also. Do you want to play the clip? Oh my god, yeah, look at these fucking, and by the way, half these people that you see in the crowd cheering for Roman Polanski are also people, I googled the names, also were like, oh, Me Too movement? Ah, it's terrible. I got talked too dirty. Like, it's fucking infuriating. Go ahead, just play it. God damn. Scorsese. Whoa. <laughs> Pedro should have won. Vote for Pedro, guys. Who can't be here because he's fucking kids in France. Sorry. He doesn't look that happy. He no, he, that happy. he doesn't look happy at all, actually. Look at the crowd. There, You can see in the crowd there's a split where a lot of people are just sitting and not clapping. If you look, a lot of people are just kind of like, oh, that lady. Hold on. Can I? Yeah, she was pissed. What do you Of course, Nicholson's like, yeah, my house fucked her in my home. Why can't he be there tonight? I I, wish they why said. couldn't he be here? Harrison, I gotta say, Harrison Ford doesn't look happy about it. I don't think he looks happy. 
Well, he made he made a movie with him in the eighties, so he couldn't have been that bummed. Yeah, like, yeah. He, uh, I yeah. see what you're saying. Yeah, and worked and worked on a set with him. I think it's this. It's one thing to be like, I'm. I'll go to an award show that's has a file as a as a nominee, but to be like, yeah, I spent three months with him in Paris making a movie, and we talked every day on set. It's like, oh, the file. Well, it's not a big deal. He makes good movies. <laughs> like that's yeah. all you can say. So you know, artist. you know, often I've had this conversation with people where they're like, you don't watch movies anymore? I used to be obsessed with movies, so people are like, like kind of weird, like taken back when I say that I don't watch movies. And they're always like, not always, but a lot of people are like, well, I don't care what they do in their personal life. I just like being entertained. Like, what the I, fuck? I don't care what they do in their personal life either, as long as it doesn't involve rich children. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Like, fuck, exactly. if you're a guy, fuck a guy. Uh, do all the drugs you want, beat up ladies if they're cool with it, whatever the, whatever the case. But when it comes to fucking children, that's where I might draw the line. Yeah. Dan, yeah. if you knew a mechanic that could like that worked for half the price of any other mechanic you knew, and he knew your car really well, but he was racist as fuck, would you still use him? Racist? Sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there wasn't even like a, eh. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wouldn't talk about them with anything. Race, I sure, I don't care anything. what their personal views are. That doesn't include yeah. f-ing children. Or here, I'll I'll take it a step further. Raping women or raping uh, even adult women. If you're a racist, I'm not going to. Uh, I, I have this. I don't have. I've heard a phrase a long time ago, and I, I stand by it. Vote with your dollars, right? So where you spend yeah. your money is what you say you believe in. Follow the money, right? So. Uh, by Joe not watching movies anymore, he's not contributing his money towards a pedophile ring, pretty much. Right. Yeah. So, um, completely understand. But racist, I don't care your personal beliefs or your p- personal beliefs. Doesn't mean I subscribe to them. But mm-hmm. kids, man, that's even anyone, or even even not even rape. Even if they're thirteen year old prostitutes and they want to be there, still, I'm not okay with it, man. Their mind isn't yeah, fully no. developed. Plus, I mean, I have nephews and nieces and great nieces. Um, you know, just, just it ain't it ain't right, man. It ain't right. Yeah. Well, that's an episode. God's yeah. people. Yeah, twelve <laughs> minutes. Don't rape. See you next week. <laughs> it should be that easy. It should. Oh, well, by the way, at the uh, the twenty twenty Caesar Awards, they're a French award show. So F- Polanski all over the place. He fucking struts down the aisles there. Like I can be here. He won in 2020, and this woman that was uh, this French actress, Adele Hanel, was nominated that night, and she walked out clapping when he won the award, walking out, and there's a video, I should have sent you the link, she just walks out clapping going, bravo, pedophile, bravo, pedophile, it's, you really? can see the video, oh, dude, I will, I'm going to clip this in right here. Roman Polanski pour Jacques. Madame Sandrine Kiberlin. Le César du meilleur film son. It is pretty like, holy, she fucking really was like, I don't like this. I'm going to say it really loud right now. I should have looked up her credits since that year and been like, let's see if anyone hired her again. That was probably career suicide. Wow. Pretty wild. I don't know. Just. Yeah, dude. All right. So let's. They, they, they praise him in uh, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Like. Rome Plansky? Yeah. He's like an actor plays him in the movie. And no, I don't know. Tarantino is definitely a fucking creep. Too. Oh yeah, oh one hundred percent, a million percent. Yeah. Yeah, no, because yeah. he defended, he defended Polanski and said, "Well, that girl wanted to be there. Like she's a party girl. She wants to be." It was on Howard Stern in the nineties. I should have sent this clip too. Drop it in, Joe. Anytime a person's thirteen. Mm-hmm. And an adult has sex with them. I believe that's rape. Look, okay, I don't believe that's rape. I believe it's against the law. Right. All right. I All believe right. it's rape. I don't believe it's rape. 
I mean, not at 13. Not, not for these 13-year-old party girls. Out there. Oh, my Really? <laughs> 13-year-old party girls. What is that? Was guilty of having sex with a minor. All right. That she didn't want to have. No, that was not the case at all. She wanted to have it. Well, and dated, the dated, dated the guy. Dated the guy. And, and the guy. And, she was 13. And found out. Well, and by the way, we're talking about America's morals. We're not talking about the morals in Europe and everything. Oh. All right. Uh, Wait a second. More you than Europe, sex more than China. With a 13-year-old girl, and you're in a grown man. Uh -huh. You know that that's wrong because oh, no, she I'm has been giving a, her booze and, and I'm pills. Not I'm not. Look. She was down with it. Oh, you're oh. crazy. Why did all this not being with a 13-year-old? Well, yeah, get a woman have. your own age. He likes girls. He 13 likes year babies. Old? Hold on, hold on. Insane, yeah. insane. Wait, who, who, who was saying she's a party girl? Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino, Tarantino was defending Polanski, saying, like, girls are like that. She's a party girl. Like, it's insane, dude. By the way, Polanski at the time was, like, mid-30s, so it's like, it's not even like, oh, I'm 20. She's, no, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't. Anyway. Yeah. I'm just going to ruin everyone's good time. These are some actors who have worked with Rowan Polanski since he was convicted. Like, since everyone knew, like, that guy fucked a 13-year-old. Walter Matthau, Harrison Ford, Hugh Grant, Sigourney Weaver, Johnny Depp, Frank Langella, Adrian Brody, Ian McNeil, Pierce Brosnan, Tom Wilkinson, John Bernthal, James Belushi, Jodie Foster, Kate Winslet, Christoph Waltz, John C. Riley. Uh, Mickey Rourke, John Cleese. So I'm just, those are enough names where I was like, fuck all these people. Because I yeah. like some of them. Like, Mickey Rourke, though, he'll suck a dick for, like, a cameo in some Sylvester Stallone movie. I He's seen fucking that. weirdo. I seen that. And John Cleese. I kind of liked him. I thought he was pretty funny. But it's like, no, doesn't give a fuck. He goes, oh, I'll work with pals. It's no wonder. But anyway, anyways, <laughs> since that year, since 2003, when he won the Oscar for Best, Direct Best Director, and everyone was like, why would you do that? He has not been nominated for a major award in America, anywhere else, except for the French Caesar Awards, where they're like, we like him. We're, we're, yeah. we're going to get him. So you're saying that... Oh, do we not have a... Um, what's it called? Extradition treaty with, with France? Not not for this. Not for a charge of fuck. It was the, the, the right year, and he has the status he has, where they're like, we're not bringing him back for that. No. Like, they specifically were like, no. Nah. And they were going to charge him, and someone leaked it to him, which shows, like, how much pull they yeah. have in Hollywood, where it's like, yo, and it's like, yeah. no, Roman, like, they're going to charge you. You might want to get the fuck out of here, dude. Yeah. By the way, and uh, lastly, in 2019... Well, governments are super entwined, and government is super intertwined with Hollywood, so... Of course. But in 2019, the Academy officially expelled Roman Polanski to, like, to say, like, you're never going to get nominated, you can never come again. I'm not kidding. Polanski in, in France, he filed a lawsuit... Swear to God, and when you have to let me, and they're like, "Oh, yeah, no," and they went to court, and the judge went, "Yeah, you can't come here, bro. Like, you fucked a thirteen-year-old. Like, at least they're hiding it over here. You just did it." So he, to be fair, not even to be fair, to be fair, huh? at least they eventually were like, "Well, no, you can't come." It's like he's been invited for the last thirty years. It's like, Whoa. anyway, kills me. Disgusting. It's just, yeah. It's disgusting. And the more I looked into this, by the way, I kept telling Joe, Dan, I'm like, this is a bummer. Like, this was, I thought this would be a fun little episode, and I'm like, oh, no, I can't I watch this, anything. We, I pushed this episode off for fucking months because I knew it was going to be fucking... Yeah. Just, yeah. All right, so this dude is a... Um, <coughs> so he was in Thor. He was in Enemy of the State. He's a B actor. He's like a... Uh, you know, He's the, a comedian, too. Yeah, but but like he's he's the mo the most known movie he's been in I think would be Thor, where yes. he's just a side character that you buy something in a store from and he has like I don't know one scene worth of lines and shit. You know what I mean? Mm, sure, that makes sense. Dave. Yeah, I'm with you. I think he had more of a presence I think on podcasts and whatnot, and he ran in the Hollywood in the circles with like Seth Green, yeah. and like Dane yeah. Cook. I'm not am I mistaken with that one? Um, I haven't heard about Dane Cook, but I know it's Seth <coughs> Green, Macaulay Culkin. Okay, um, can you see that, Dave? Yeah. All right, this is uh, Isaac Cappy. Steven Spielberg is a pedophile. Yep. See how easy that was, Corey? I didn't need $10 million. I just said it. When you're talking about, like, really elite levels, the name of the game is blackmail. So... They want something on you that they can hold over your head 
so they can basically own you and tell you what to do. That's what runs the whole system, basically. You know, a lot of people, they'll just go along with it and do whatever just for fame or money or accolades or any of that stuff. So this is all cut in together because this is like an hour long of him like outing all these people and I took like the most well, he doesn't, crazy parts. Just so I can say, they're going to say he's on drugs. He doesn't sound like he's fucked up. Am I wrong, Dan? Does he? He sounds pretty clear. He sounds he's clear. Not Even if he is on he's drugs, not repeating. I mean, I mean, if you just found out your best friend was a, I mean, and you're outing him to the whole world, I don't know. I'd be high. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which. <laughs> Oh, I'm not going to talk about Tom Hanks either, who is also a file. Tom Hanks, folks, is a file. Sorry to, I'm sorry if this is the kind of bursting your bubble. All this information is new. It's it's hard. I mean, I I didn't know. It took me. It took the situation punching me in the face before I realized I was in the middle of some crazy fucking shit. Aren't you concerned for my life? Uh. Yeah, but more importantly, I'm concerned for I'm concerned for everybody because this shit has been going on forever. <laughs> might be on drugs. Never mind. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. Uh, why don't you show us proof? There's a bunch of stuff I posted on HN. And by the way, the proof is in the fucking pudding. If I'm lying, sue me. Sue me. Great. Let's go to court. Let's have discovery. There it is. Do you know how many people I would love to get up there? Associates? Yeah, Sarah is very brave. Oh yeah, Tom Hanks. Tom fucking Hanks, guys. File. Called out, no response. Uh, that's the thing, these people, they advertise everything with their symbols. Um, like after gate hit, and then that's when I really began to pay attention. Um, I, I saw Claire and she had this leather jacket with a heart inside a heart. I'm like, why are you wearing that? That's like a known file symbol. When Gate hit, I was researching uh, on 4chan. And uh, so I was kind of like, oh, wow, this is a problem. But when it really, really hit me was that, uh, well, this the first time it really hit me was at Seth's. I'm all uh, at, there was, we had, uh, we went over there, played Mafia. It's a role-playing game that we play. Um, and at the end of the night, it was me, Seth, and uh, his brother-in-law. And Seth, <laughs> Seth turned to me and opened up this secret bookshelf, and he's like, "This is where we keep the children." Sounds exactly like something. And uh, I, the I was it like, joke, I, don't know. Hidden I tried to just put it out of my mind, uh, but then about a month later, Seth, Claire, and I were having a dinner at their house, and Seth said, "We now need to have a talk about chicken," and I was like, "Oh God." And then he basically, basically admitted that he's a oh. uh, This is the problem. This guy <clears throat> came to Hollywood to get famous. He came to Hollywood to get roles, get famous, meet people. He did that, right? Um, he probably does party drugs. He hangs out with those that crew. I'm sure they drink and whatever, hang out with girls. That's what sucks is that it's this guy that's going to tell us, like, hey, I figured it out. These guys are pedophiles. I'm like, I wish he would have been, like, a publicist or an agent because so, you would have documents instead of just being like, I don't know. Seeing he is believing, best friends seeing is believing, Dan. You said that last episode, and I was I, a couple times. I get it, but I will say it's a bummer that he didn't have any solid, you know. Dude, he was best friends with Seth. He confronted him in public. It was on TMZ or some shit. I tried looking for the clip. Well, the best but evidence like he, of him being right is he died. Which to me is like, yeah. that's the best well, evidence that. that you're right. You're onto something is if you die, it's like, yeah, he probably knew something. Yeah. And like he said, if he's wrong, sue him. Nobody sued him. Yeah. Not only that, but if they sue over somebody saying something, defamation, they're just bringing that to light to more people's eyes and making it more public. So there's no reason. But also, this guy's not a threat. This guy's like, there's, he's not a threat. He, he has no, uh, he's not an upstanding member. Of, and he has no motive no, to, what does no he get out of it? Right. No, I agree with the no motive, but he's in a position where no one will listen to him. Like, his followers did. But, no, Dan, you ever heard of Cappy ever? Never. I've only heard of him because I looked up uh, 
Only because I go to some conspiracy websites and, and they mentioned Seth Green, and this guy came up. That's the only reason I know him. Do you know anyone who was murdered because of this? Not personally. Um, not personally, but people are murdered for it. Is Oprah a pedophile? Well, no, let's see. Oh, Hanks, Weinstein. I mean, the company she keeps as rich as she is, I have a feeling she is very high up in the cult. And this, make no mistake, this is a cult. There is a widespread cult that is worldwide. And it's fucking bad, guys. It's bad. Everyone's afraid. They're afraid to come out. People that that know they don't want to do it. It's it's scary, guys. People get killed over this shit. It happens all the time. So a lot of showbiz parents will knowingly give 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 their kids to be uh, to be abused because they'll be like, oh well. Oh, we'll get your we'll get your kid uh, rules and money, and then they take the they take the money and and then they just sell their kids. People sell their kids. They sell their kids for for money. And it's just, it's very fucking very fucked up. And it's shocking, and it's going to be painful, and it's going to be painful for. A lot of uh, mutual friends of mine and Seth and Claire's. Uh, it's 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 shocking. It's it 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 broke my heart. Like it broke my heart because I I mean I I, I love them. <laughs> I don't know. I think he's telling the truth. I think he's telling the truth. <laughs> if, he, if, he's, if he's acting, that's some really good fucking acting at the end there. Yeah. By the way, him saying people sell their parents sell their kids. Yeah. I would never let my fucking kid be like a stage actor. Some parents will draw. Not it's not about selling your kids. You just draw, some uh, kid actors, their parents will drop them off at the parties. Yeah. Even at the set that day, they'll go. They'll drop them off and leave. And just not even be there and go, okay, I'll pick you up at like three. Yeah. So. I don't know, man. On that, um, when you, when Usher. What do you say? <laughs> Usher said, I'm that. No, 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 on that. You uh, were a stage kid? Okay. No, when Usher was uh, coming up in in uh, the music scene or whatever, he was highly sought after then when he started to hit puberty. And uh, they didn't know what to do with him. So they brought him to uh, Diddy's house, and he literally lived in Diddy's house for uh, a period of time, and um, pretty much Diddy. How old was he? He was young. He was a uh, teen, young teenager, and um, his pretty much Diddy had custody of him and saw all the debauchery that went on there, and uh, is very coy about talking about it, won't really tell anyone what happened there and the things that he saw. Didn't Justin Bieber get found by P Diddy? No, he used to hang out. I don't know if that's the case, but they hung out a lot. They, yeah, he spent some time there. Have as you ever well. you ever seen the music video Yummy? Have you ever seen the Have you ever seen the compilation of people treating Justin Bieber being like thirteen and women like grabbing Jamie McCarthy grabbed his ass and like women being like he's fucking hot? Who? What dude said it? Someone yeah. called a uh, fucking Neil Patrick Harris. There's an interview with she. He goes, it was like when Justin Bieber was like fifteen. He goes, they go, who's your celebrity crush? He goes. It's not okay to say it now, but it will be. But Justin Bieber is like, woof. And I'm like, yeah, fucking 15 year old fucking... kid, bro. You're 40. <laughs> like, what are you doing? What yeah. are you doing? So, Isaac Cappy did did a bunch of those um, those videos. Mm -hmm. And then his very last one, the chat asked him, Are you suicidal? And he said, I'm not suicidal. Um, but am, am I scared? I should be because something's coming. Three days later, he died. He jumped from a bridge on Route 66 and got hit by a truck, okay? Tom Hanks, shortly after, posted this on his Instagram. Historic Route 66 roadkill? I hope not. Hanks. There's a bottle cap down here. There's a fucking P written on the bottle cap. For what? Cappy. P stands for Cappy? Cap? Bottle cap? 
P, wrote a P on it, and then his Instagram post is that's talking not, about Route that's 66. That's in. No. It's down there. Damn, what you got? That's some wild shit. And he outed Tom Hanks. That's some wild shit. But why would Tom Hanks go, hey, fucking Rita Wilson, I'm going to drive to the bridge. I'm not saying he did it. He's just on Route 66. He but might not this even. Was, be... This was the same day you said. No, no, no. I said shortly after. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, why he could be anywhere? Just his Instagram post could just say Route 66. But the fact that he put a bottle cap in the picture with a P on the fucking top of a bottle cap, right after he dude supposedly killed himself on Route 66, it doesn't make it does doesn't make any fucking sense. Uh, Cappy was talking about people want to come forward, but they're scared. Yeah. Can you bring up? Can you pop, pop up that Corey Feldman interview on The View with Barbara Walters? Oh, yeah. You ever seen that, Dan? Nope. Corey Feldman. You, you know Corey Feldman, yeah, though, yeah. right? Stand by me. Um, Goonies? Uh, was he in Goonies? Fr- Friday the 13th, part four. He wasn't, Goonies, he wasn't Goonies. Gremlins. That kid has been working like in at, since he was really young. So if anyone knows something about Hollywood, being a child, it's Corey Feldman. Corey Feldman, uh, in 2000, what year was this? This is... Probably 2011, maybe? Maybe 2011? It doesn't say. That's when it was produced. It was earlier than that. In the 2010s, Corey Feldman uh, went on The View with Barbara Walters when she was still on. And Barbara Walters, you know who the fuck she is, right? Yeah. She's, like, if hailed as one of the most important uh, journalists in the modern times. So she covered, like, huge events. Like She has been around a long time. And for being a woman... It says a lot more in the industry as opposed to someone else like Walter Cronkite, Dan Rather. But Barbara Walters shifted later in life to kind of uh, covering, like, she she started, like, celebrity, like, like gossip, like, celebrity journalism. Like, she started kind of interviewing movie stars, like, they matter, like, their opinion's big. Mm-hmm. She started that kind of movement. So, fast forward to Corey Feldman, he's, like, 40 years old. Corey Hyam dies, he himself from drug shit because he probably got molested to death. Ooh, I have a clip for that. I, I have a bunch I have of a stuff clip on for that. Corey Heim really. and Charlie Sheen. I have a clip of that. But um, Corey Feldman comes on the View in the 2010s to talk about the to mention. I'm sure this wasn't his hook, but he had in his head like I'm going to mention some shit about what the industry was like with me as a kid, you know. And Barbara Walters, a, 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 one of the most respected news people of media in general since the inception, the, since the modern inception of it. This look, listen how this goes out because you've never seen this clip before. Mm-mm. I cannot wait to see his fucking face play this dude. They're still out there, and they're some of the richest, most powerful people in this business. And they are, and they predator, do not want me saying what I'm saying right now. Are, are you saying that they're files? Yes, and that yes. they're still in this business. Yes, wow. that's what. Yeah, and that's what you were saying wow. in your book. When you that's talk you to, talk about. yeah, when yes. you talk to and parents, they don't want me here right now. Trust Corey, me, they there, want me dead. there are a lot of parents out here yeah. who want to put their kids in this in this business. They, their kids are cute. They're great actors. Da, da, da. What would you say to a parent who just has the best of intentions, who's coming here with their child? Mm-hmm. If um, you're saying that there's a lot of predators in this industry, it's a many feathered bird. Okay? Be careful what you wish for. That's what I'll tell you. You know, don't go into it with naivety. Don't go into it thinking that it's all roses and You're sunglasses and all an entire industry. I'm sorry, I I'm not trying to. That... I'm just trying to say that it's a very important, serious topic. You said that there was one gentleman in the industry who did not take advantage of you. He was not a That's You said right. that was Michael Jackson. Of all people. I wanted... They cut that up. up. They We're cut that up. up. That's not. I'm, I apologize. That wasn't the right clip. They cut that up. She says you're damaging an entire industry to Corey Feldman. She said that. I, She's trying. He said <laughs> there are people that are still in power. <clears throat> what do you fucking think about that? That Barbara Walters goes, "Oh, uh, you're damaging an industry right now." Isn't that? Fucking insane! Rather, yeah, dude, she's a she's probably one of them, bro. Rather, Brick. yeah, rather than get to the bottom of what he's saying, she's like, "Hey, pump the brakes, buddy." Yeah. Yeah, that's a little fucked up. She's an yeah. investigative journalist that works in Hollywood, and she buried that lead? What the fuck are you doing? Because she's not... That was insane. That's fucking crazy that that fucking happened. And she died when people said, I'm sad Barbara Walters died. Ew, I hope a p- comes out <laughs> her grave. Oh fuck God. off. <laughs> Cunt. That's so fucked up. Uh, her. This was later on. I was going to play this later on, but now that we're already on Corey Feldman. Uh, you, know, you remember Corey Heim, D? No. Uh, 
uh, Dream a Little Dream. This guy. Lucas. He was in Crank 2, High Voltage. Was he? He had the rat tail in that movie. Yeah, it was oh, his last movie. Oh, okay. Yeah. I remember seeing this movie, but I remember. Uh, that kid? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was he in Little... Okay, that's Corey Hyde. Was he in that monster movie? No, that was uh, Fred Savage. Okay. Files? I mean, monsters. No. Same thing. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I remember that guy. All right. He told me, Charlie, bent me over in between two trailers and put Crisco oil on my butt and ripped me. In broad daylight, anybody could have walked by, anybody could have seen it. On the set of Lucas, uh, he told me that, you know, it was his co-star. And he told me that it was Charlie Sheen that did it. Then on the movie he had worked on, and uh, and then I said, well, who is it? And then he says, Charlie. Charlie Sheen. It's Charlie Sheen. So um, I heard that, that Charlie Sheen had... Uh, he had said to him, this is what men do. Shit, I've personally heard a story about Charlie and Corey Haim. Probably at least a dozen people probably in my inner circle knew for sure. It was pretty much common knowledge. I mean, Charlie Sheen was diddling him on the set of uh, Lucas. But, but what, what Corey Haim what told do do me about it? when I was sitting with Feldman in the office of the house in Vancouver that he had been molested on the set of Lucas. And he said it was Charlie Sheen. Follow up. Please go into your Charlie Sheen shit. <laughs> I'm going to start it off with this. I'm going to send you a link really quick. Is okay. it too late for now or no? No, just... I'm going to send you a link. There's this podcast uh, these comedians do, but one of them is like autistic slightly. But he's funny. He read the entire court case when Charlie Sheen and Denise Richards got divorced. First of all, I don't and like you was... talking about Burt Kreischer like that, okay? I don't think he's... Well, I, didn't say anything about Burt I don't think he's that autistic. Oh, no. Burt Kreischer? Oh, my God. I hope he drowns in alcohol. <laughs> Fuck him. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. So, this guy, this comedian, read over the entire divorce file of um, uh, the Charlie Sheen and Denise Richards case, which is public record. You can find that. You can request that and get it. And it also includes, like, uh, testimony from prostitutes and girlfriends that Charlie Sheen had that were, like, all fucking say shit about him if you want custody of your child. I'll do that. We That's have right. it because we didn't it have happened time. happened right after. This, yeah, all this yeah. shit has happened in the span of three days. This is crazy. The Charlie Sheen thing, I believe, happened. You know, I believe that he... But, what again, it seems like is that Charlie Sheen probably had just a homosexual relationship with Corey Haim when Corey Haim was 13 and Charlie Sheen was 19. That's um, that's that's raping a cop. It is, it yeah. is. But the way in the story it's defended is Charlie Sheen tells him, or well, Feldman in Feldman's accusations from years ago, where he wouldn't actually name Charlie Sheen because the person that did it is known for threatening to kill people, which is like <laughs> Charlie Sheen's move. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> um, Dude, Tiger Blood. Yeah, man. and God, what a crazy person. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and. Uh, it, you know, the justification from Sheen was like, this is just what guys in Hollywood do. <laughs> <laughs> we fuck. Yeah, yeah. We fuck like, boys. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's normal for one actor to fuck another actor. You know, like this Gosh. is that, like that was the justification. It was his dad. Which means Charlie Sheen was yeah, probably man. horrifically sodomized for sure you know, for years, <clears throat> and then and then he's like, "Yeah, this is just what guys do," and it feeds think- into the to the idea that there's a cycle of abuse, you know, where that behavior is is uh, normalized within these like secret Hollywood communities or whatever, you- and and uh, 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 I mean, I, like that's probably what happened. But reading more into it, because I didn't pay. You know what's funny is like all of this shit has always been online. I just didn't care because I'm not a gay man so I don't read celebrity news yeah. like yeah. I really don't yeah Adam why haven't you told this old yeah right Adam knew it I keep news. it to myself first ass yeah. he had a first ass account of yeah. all of this has to be like I'm, I'm sorry but speaking of that can we loop back because I didn't finish my thought about Charlie Sheen oh okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. is that I, st- I started reading about Charlie Sheen because I said I wasn't paying attention to this celebrity news I started reading about Charlie Sheen after this happened and corroborating evidence from <laughs> sure. stuff that, and statements that he made and I am now of the opinion that Charlie Sheen is the funniest person. <laughs> I, I mean, he fucking. There's a point where you can get so evil oh, that's, that's that you're Stavros. hilarious. <laughs> yeah, Stavros it's like and Charlie it Sheen. Did that. Yeah, According yeah. to like court documents, Denise Richards would catch him 
like jacking off the child porn numerous times, <laughs> Jesus which Christ. I can only imagine was happening while he was wearing sunglasses and a leather jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and she would say, please, for our children, could you please stop doing this? Yeah. And then he would go, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> which is like the funniest way to respond yeah. to, to please stop jacking off the child porn. To the most shameful thing you can yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He acts like he forgot activities. to take the garbage yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, go like, fuck yourself. <laughs> Bitch, then, go away. Right. And then, you know, it came out that, that, he, bitch, that he had man. AIDS and he was giving all those women AIDS. And in one of the lawsuits, a woman says that she asked him numerous times if he had been tested. And he said, I'm fine. And then they slept with each other. And after he fucked her, he goes, I got HIV, by the way. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then she, like, she like <laughs> flipped out. Monster. She Jesus flipped Christ. out and she confronted him about it. And he was like. He's like, she was like, why didn't you tell me? He goes, because it's none of your fucking business. <laughs> Whoa, what the fuck? Did he get a court document? Um, I, I, I think signs. she went on anti-retrovials no. right after. Shit. And if you get on like the new Dude, ones, I think worse. after exposure, like you, it, you, if you, you do it immediately. To... Still, yeah. that's horrible. Oh, of course. I mean, I mean it's like, yeah. mostly <laughs> about, stuff, yeah. look, ultimately, like, AIDS, if you have, like, medication, you can prolong, you, it takes maybe, like, two years off your life if you get on medication <laughs> early, and, you know. So, you gotta take, you gotta take pills all day and you shit. Do, you do, like, I'm not saying it's good, but the real damage <laughs> is the psychological damage of being exposed to HIV, right, you know, right, without right. somebody fucking telling you. So, the mental stress is way worse. It's than, none of your fucking business. It's none of your fucking business. <laughs> I He's like raw imagine. dogging her with AIDS. He put on, and he's like, it's not he your on, business. Yeah. He put on the leather jacket <laughs> so and sunglasses sure. again to say it. Mm -hmm. And then he goes, I'm fucking noble for telling you. <laughs> and he's what? like, yeah, and, and then he that. told it her the to article, not yeah. take the medicine. Oh, my God. He says, God. you don't even need that medicine. It, and there's no reason to believe the convenient rumors of the medical community. <laughs> like, what the fuck is convenient about fucking... <laughs> yeah, and then he said... And then he says to her, you've been blessed by the apocalypse. At least now, not if, but when I infect you with this, we'll be together. Oh, my you know? God. And then so she's like in tears crying about it. And then and then it says, and then he started making repeated use of the N-word, <laughs> calling himself the dumbest fucking N-word in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not even like... He's not being racist. He's just, <laughs> weird. He just give someone the N word and then tell them to fuck themselves while jacking off the child porn and start calling yourself the N word. <laughs> After you gave someone AIDS. I'm sorry, dude, but that is bit central. That is a really right, that's 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 a, a character, dude. Yeah. But. Yo. That piece of shit needs to get fucking. As much as they present that in a funny way, if you listen to the facts there, it's like, that's fucking crazy. <laughs> that He is insane. So we definitely fuck Corey Hines. Oh, when, oh yeah. Oh my I god. Mean, just corroborating it through that shit is like holy shit. Can, like oh, can we dude. can we take a moment to uh give Stavros credit for making all of that insane nonsense hilarious? Cuz <laughs> listen listening listen Stavi baby. Stavi listen to listening to Stavi talk about it made me fucking chuckle, man. <laughs> oh, oh, Stavi's fucking hilarious. Anyways, <clears throat> <sighs> All right, uh, back to Tom Hanks. So, <laughs> you ever shot Tom Hanks? This, uh, you see that? Mm -hmm. This is Sir Ruth Ashcraft. This is her tweet about Tom Hanks. This is me at 13, the age I was when Tom Hanks purchased me from my father for sex as a dissociated mind control doll. I wonder how much he paid. I wonder how much money my father made for breaking my mind and selling my body throughout my life. Will I ever get to know? Is, is there more from this? Okay, sorry. This is another. This is another uh, tweet from her. People who aren't suing me because I'm telling the truth, so they can't. My family: the Roper School, Tom Hanks, Hillary Clinton, Jonathan Freeman, Craig Hilborn, John. No, Conyers. not Craig Hilborn. 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 Right? <sighs> okay, great. Um, Michigan Democratic Party, Fragoman. None of them want to go on legal record with me. Um. As a child, while under mind control, I was sexually abused by politicians, mostly Dems, including Hillary Clinton, during occult rituals, Masonic meetings, and private interactions in my own home. I've named some, not all, of the people who abused me as a child, including my parents, family, all my ex-partners, most friends, Hillary Rodham Clinton, Tom Hanks, the Catholic Cardinal, Jonathan Freeman, the voice of Jafar and Aladdin, the Roper School, and Fragoman. There are many others. I was a victim of... Gate. My father pimped me to Tom Hanks. My father took me to an occult ritual abuse, mind control programming with 
event with Hillary Rodham Clinton in the late 80s. My father literally nicknamed me Cheese and Roofie. My father was also treasurer for Oakland County, Michigan Dem Party. Mm. Interesting that John Connors is trending for sex for being a sexual predator. This doesn't surprise me at all. His son was in my group at Roper Summer Summer Day Camp. Roper is a training school for Luciferian pedo families, and I was victimized and handled as a student there. And what? here's a here's a drawing she made, and uh, the left handed shadow is pretty obvious. Left handed path. I am not sure what what the one shoe thing is. I drew this in April of 2017 from part of my memory. Part of a memory of mind control training when I was young, wandering around the building, missing my left shoe. Let's all remember that Obama gave Tom Hanks a Medal of Honor. That's how they roll, congratulating each other while arrogantly mocking the masses by flaunting their flagrant criminal behavior for all to see. I googled Sarah Ruth Ashcraft, and I clicked on the first post, yeah. and it said, what's going on with this and this with Tom Hanks? And the first comment, can I show the camera? What camera do I show this to? That one, <coughs> that one right there? Yeah. The first comment... Like that explains it. Is this? Oh, that side. Why is it flipped? Anyway, oh. it's. Oh God damn it! Just, just say what it says. It's how you pronounce it. It's on. Yeah, it's on people. Like oh, what you just talked about. It's like it's them. Ignore it. It's them. Ignore it. Which it's only not real. To like when, well, you guys saw the episodes last week. That was that. Is this coming up this next, next week? Well, the second part is coming up, and then we're doing this one. Yes, okay, fair enough. All right, Um. but yeah, that's Gate. That's a whole episode. We should save Gate. That's its own Well, this episode. is part of the episode. P- you know about Pizza- Gate? It's, 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 well, we're getting into it. There's, it's it's, uh, a few, it's a few away. It's 17, we're on 10. Sorry. Uh, here's a very quick clip, and this, supposedly, this was meant to be a joke, but, um, yeah. Adam West? And you saw you saw uh, Isaac Cappy out Spielberg, right? So this was just a fun little interview. It's like eight seconds long. Here you go. Can you tell us a secret about Steven Spielberg? He eats babies. Whole babies. That's Shia LaBeouf saying that. Yeah. He's fucking around. He's Do you fu- know what Pizzagate is? I know what that is, but I'm saying Shia LaBeouf was doing press for a fucking tour and was bored as fuck, and they asked him something, and he goes, he... And he told that the truth. Was an, I think that was an off-the-cuff fucking And he told thing. the truth. Fine. It's true. Dude, we're getting into so much stuff that it's quite obvious that he wasn't joking. We talked about the Frizzle Drip video. Um, what episode was that? We were talking about uh, Clinton and the Frizzle Drip video. Drip oh, video? that was last week. That was last week on the on the Keon episode. Remember where they say that it's an AI video going around on the dark web? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Drip. Where she's this? she's torturing a girl on camera and with fuck? Huma Abedin. You don't play that, do you? No, I don't. Ha- I don't. I wouldn't. I don't want to watch right? that shit yeah, anyway. Fuck? Is it weird that I w- we'd get fucking? We, well, you could blur it out. What? The, play it. <laughs> I don't have the oh. video. Just fucking play it. <laughs> Whatever. We all seen stuff. Just that alone, though, is very like, yo, get this we're, off here. We're getting like, into those pictures, too. I was going to walk in and see That's this. That's a painting. It's terrible. You saw that Epstein painting, right? Huh? You're, did you show that Epstein painting on your episode with George Bush? Sitting on yeah. the ground? Yeah. And you, fucking, you showed yeah. that? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. She told me everything. She had pictures. She had everything. She was in hiding for 12 years. We convinced her to come out. We convinced her to talk to us. Um, it was unbelievable what we had. Clinton. We had everything. I, I tried for three years to get it on to no avail. And now it's all coming out. And it's like these new re- revelations. And I freaking had all of it. I, I, I'm so pissed right now. Like Every day I get more and more pissed because I'm just like... Oh my God! We—it was um, what, what we had was unreal. Brad Edwards, the attorney, three years ago, saying like, um, like, we there will come a day when we will realize Jeffrey Epstein was the most prolific pedophile this country has ever known. And I had it all three years ago. Ew. 
And so, they didn't let her put it out because it would have affected her relationship with the royal family. But if she's saying that there, shouldn't she have said, like, names? Like, I remember certain it was a hot key mic. things. She didn't even know she was getting... Re- she didn't realize it was she's being recorded and shit. That, that would be released. She was just talking to her colleagues. <sighs> so makes me the most mad about all this kind of stuff is that, like, people act like they care. Like, if you care enough, I'm like, when you're on a mic, just yell a name. Like, just fucking... Yeah. Especially if you're live. It makes me so fucking pissed. So this is one of... <laughs> Sorry. God damn it. You're okay. Uh, on your screen is Rachel Chandler. She's one of Jeffrey Epstein's victims. And here is she is photographed with Bill Clinton and Eminem when she was 17. Your boy M is a pedophile too, bud. I can see that. Boy. I can see that. <laughs> Uh, I, I liked Hot him a lot when I was pot. younger. <clears throat> when I was young, I liked him. Hot <laughs> coffee pot. Sorry, I just heard it. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> All right, so the FBI really symbols that that the files use, and it's like a little triangle, loopy thing. That is, they put it on like coins and shits, on necklaces, rings, stuff like that. And these are actual legit. This is the FBI document that they released showing logos that people wear here's the the so that was a boy lover the triangle one a heart within a heart is a girl lover um yeah they just showing because we're going to go through all their logos and their code words and shit here's their code words for that pedophiles use that actual fbi they catch people that's how they catch pedophiles like on the internet and shit with using these code words Pizza is child, cheese is girl, pasta is boy, hot dog is boy, ice cream is male prostitute, walnut is of dark skin color, sauce is orgy, map is semen. So, uh, should uh, people watch Disney then? Disney? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with Disney. Who doesn't like Disney? Disney. They've never done anything wrong in their whole entire establishment's career. You're right. I'm sorry. Here's a video. Part 1. The children cartoons contain references to sex and violence. Doesn't that make you wonder who Walt Disney really was? Why are children exposed to Illuminati symbols, such as pyramids and the all-seeing eye, time and again? There's probably way more. I think the uh, penis is appearing on covers of movie covers and, and animated Disney movies. I think it's just animators that didn't grow up and they were like, bro, I'm going to draw a dick on the cover of this shit. Yeah, I'm, I don't I'm just saying because I feel like seeing that is not going to be like, oh, I'm suddenly going to fuck kid. Like, there's right. no. I agree with you. It's there. just kind of like, let's see if we can get away with it. Okay, so what's up with the boy shit. lover symbols all over Disney cartoons? That's just lazy animation. Where like, how many shapes can you draw okay. before you're like triangle? Oh, uh, you're like, still you're end. still enthralled in Hollywood, like deep. No, bud. I think I think it is a real thing though. If you show <clears> the <throat> emails to, to, that they had, that place had, that those emails are like indisputable as far as people yeah. talk like this. Speak, like, speaking of talk like this. speaking We're of about emails, to go the whole thing. do you have some of the Clinton and Obama emails? We're about to go through that shit. Right oh, now. Ho, ho, those are good, buddy. You've seen these? I've never oh, seen those. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, everybody. Uh, so we're going to end this right here and then we're going to pick back up next week. Uh, Stay tuned yeah. for Godspeed. part two. Godspeed. Godspeed. Bye. It's Godspeed. It's Godspeed. You've reached the offices of the Godspeed podcast. We are currently closed. Please leave your information and someone will return your call within 24 business days. Thank you. If you listen to okay. some of P. Diddy's verses, like he's talking about, uh, 
or like best friends playing up the, uh, underneath the streets and you weren't just like my girl, you're you're my brother. And then take that, take that, you know what he's saying. It's like a whole like uh, Epstein Island, you know, episode, but he's got, they're all in on it, man. It's fucking rapid. You think it's just like two people doing it? R. Kelly's like, they're all in on it together. And they learned it from all these other little pedos. They're all perverts. Satanistic worshiping child sacrificing pervos. And it's the same shit that's been going on for thousands of years. It's nothing that's different. We just think we're special. It's modern times. We think we're special and everything's different because it's us. No, it's the same fucking thing in the history books. They say it all the time. Child sacrificing is uh it's normal it doesn't matter what continent it's on it's, they do it they're fucking weirdos